On this screen, I have shown four different possible combinations of how the first and second derivative signs might show up. The first derivative could be positive or negative, and I want to remind you that the first derivative tells me whether or not a function is increasing or decreasing. So the first derivative positive tells me that the function that I don't have, my f of x, is increasing. So I have two cases where I'm increasing, and where the first derivative is negative, I have that the original function is decreasing. So I have two cases where my function is decreasing. The second derivative is about concavity. And so where the second derivative is positive, my original function is concave up. And so there are two places in this screen where I have a concave up shape. And where the second derivative is negative, I have a concave down shape. To illustrate what these graphs would look like, uh, let's look at each of these four cases. In the first case, my first derivative is positive, which means my function is increasing. So just to remind you of increasing, I'm going to do a dashed line. But the idea that the function is concave up means that my actual function is bending up. And so my graph would typically be increasing and concave up. So imagine you had that straight line shown by the dotted line. Uh, if you bend both ends up, uh, that gives you your concave up shape. In the top right corner, we have a function that is increasing, but concave down. So now imagine that you were to take that straight rod and now bend it down. And so a increasing concave down shape looks something like that. A decreasing function is one where as you go to the right, your function goes down. To be concave up, I bend that up. And so a concave up, but decreasing function would look somewhat like that. A decreasing and concave down shape, imagine you're a decreasing rod that is bent down, and you get a decreasing concave down shape. Let's now look at an example of sign analysis. So here I have a two number lines one number line for the first derivative, one number line for the second derivative, and on each number line I've marked where the derivatives are positive, negative, and zero. Our goal is to look at these two number lines and determine where my function is increasing, decreasing, concave up, concave down. From that we can generate our different shapes from our four basic shape categories and then we can put them together to create our actual function. For these two number lines, what we will do is we will think about both of these number lines as generating combinations of patterns. So we can slice it up into these different regions, and each of those subregions we have a basic shape. On the first shape we're increasing and concave down and so we're going to have a basic shape that's increasing and concave down. In the next region we're decreasing and concave down and so we'll have a shape that's decreasing and concave down. In the next little region we are decreasing and concave up followed by decreasing and concave down followed by decreasing and concave up, followed by increasing and concave up. Now what we want to do, we want to put these different shapes together, tacking them together end to end. So these two points will be joined together. And notice that our first derivative has a slope of 0 at 2, which matches exactly what our graph looks like it wants to do. So what I've done is I've taken those two shapes and I've joined them together, remembering that I need to have a horizontal tangent at this point at negative 2. Next, we want to join these two points. We notice that our first derivative is negative, 
That means we'll want to continue our negative slope, but we're going to join those two points, switching concavity. We continue that negative slope, but now our graph is concave up. At this point, we have our point of inflection where we're continuing that negative slope. We now want to join these two points, paying attention that we want to have a zero slope, so that's a horizontal tangent. Between zero and a half, we need to be decreasing and concave down. Well, noticing that we have a zero slope at the point x equals zero. The next two points we want to join are at a half, where I have these points joined, paying attention that we are joining them with a negative slope. We now graph our function with a decreasing concave up shape, making note of our point of inflection, which had a negative slope. Should remark that the earlier point was also a point of inflection because our concavity changed. We're going to end now by joining our last two points together with a slope of zero. Our final region is increasing in concave up and our graph goes on forever with that shape. We started earlier, we should put an arrow on our end and let's make note of our final point that we had. We had a zero slope at x equals 1. And so that's the shape that we get from our sign analysis. Some remarks. At x equals negative 2, we have a local maximum. The reason being that our original first derivative said that we were increasing to the left and decreasing to the right. So we went up to a maximum and then we came down from a maximum. We have three points of inflection where our con concavity changed and we have a local minimum at x equals 1. We could see that from our first derivative as well. We were decreasing on the left, increasing on the right, so I went down to a minimum and then I went up from a minimum. From our first and second derivatives it is not possible to know the actual values of the graph. So notice I did not give a y-axis. All I do know is my x-axis. I know my local maximum was at negative 2. My point of inflections were at negative 1, 0, and at a half. And I had a local minimum at x equals 1. Here we have a second example. Again, we will look at our two sign analysis number lines. We're going to chop it every time either sign changes. So we have these one, two, three, four, five, five different intervals that we'll look at the shape. In the first region, our first derivative is positive, meaning we're increasing, and our second derivative is negative, meaning we're concave down. The basic shape on that first region is increasing and concave down. In the second region, we are decreasing concave down, so our shape will look like the top right corner of a circle. The third region, we are decreasing and concave up, so our graph looks like the lower left corner of a circle. The next region, we are increasing concave up, the lower right corner of a circle, followed by an increasing concave down shape where we are increasing concave down. We take notice of our two critical points where the first derivative equals zero. We will need to join the corresponding points with horizontal tangents. On the other hand, at the points where the first derivative does not change sign, I need to have a corresponding negative and positive slope this is somewhat in contrast to how I've drawn my regions. Notice that my shapes actually look like they're going vertical, but my derivatives need to be either some negative number or positive number. When I join them together, I am not going to make it vertical. I, I want to have some sort of clear positive or negative slope. 
Let's draw our x-axis. Mark our key points. Negative 2, 0, 1, and 2. I don't really know what my y values are, but I have a local maximum at x equals negative 2. So let's make an increasing concave down shape, followed by a decreasing concave down shape, ending at some negative slope. So I want to continue this negative slope, leading to a minimum at x equals 0. So I will be decreasing concave up, followed by increasing concave up. And now I have another point of inflection with a definite positive slope. I want to continue my graph with that slope, but now it's switching to concave down. Now I have to be careful. I do not want to have my graph bend all the way down because this region is in conflict with the fact that my original sign analysis says my function is continuing to increase. So let's go back just a little bit. My graph needs to continue to increase and be concave down, which means it's sort of flattening out. It's either going to level off to some, maybe a horizontal shape without ever bending down, or maybe it'll just sort of level off with some sort of positive slope that never bends down. Either way, I'm consistent with being increasing or concave down. Summarizing our graph, we have a local maximum at x equals negative 2. We have a point of inflection at x equals 0 and at x equals 2. We also have a local minimum at x equals 1. For my third example, I have the same sign analyses as I had in the previous example, except that I've switched the number lines for f prime and f double prime. And the reason I've done this is I want to illustrate a few problems that can come if you just randomly put down some sign analyses and see what the graph of the function looks like. When I look at the regions that are formed from these sign analyses, I have, again, five different shapes that I need to join together. When I look at them though this time, I'm decreasing concave up, followed by decreasing concave down. Next, I am increasing and concave down, followed by increasing concave up. Finally, I'm decreasing concave up. So these are the shapes I have. Notice some things that we have going on. When I join these two points, my sign analysis says I need to join them with a negative slope. In order to do that, I cannot go horizontal. So if I think about joining them, I need to pick some sort of negative slope. On the left, I need to form an in a decreasing and concave up shape, while on the right I need to be a decreasing concave down shape. Now we reach a really interesting problem. In order to join these two points, I have to either have a corner, like some sort of cusp, or I'm going to have to have a discontinuity in my function. Either way, my first derivative does not exist. And if the first derivative doesn't exist, that guarantees that we should have had another point where the second derivative also does not exist. For illustrative purposes, let's use the idea that maybe there's a vertical asymptote at this point. So we have a vertical asymptote. And so my function would just keep going down to a vertical asymptote. On the other side of the vertical asymptote, I have another shape that is coming up and being concave down. Here at 1, I need to join with a positive slope. 
So fortunately, I've already drawn that so that it'll work. Now, at 2, I need to join these shapes again. My first derivative cannot exist because of that coming together at an incompatible shape. So my first derivative doesn't exist. That means my second derivative can't exist. I could have either a vertical asymptote again, going up to infinity, or I might have them coming together at a point. Let's do that one this time. And again, I don't want to bend up. That would be incompatible with my sign analysis. So let's just have our function continue down forever. And so there's a graph that's consistent with our sign analyses. In this picture, because these points came together, I have a local maximum. On the other hand, because of my vertical asymptote, there is no minimum. I do have two points of inflection, which are sometimes called inflection points. That's how sign analyses of first and second derivatives allow us to graph functions.